we get into this video, 68% of you that watch these videos are not subscribed. Get your life together. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, leave a like on this video. Subscribe, turn on notifications, leave a like. And yeah, let's go ahead and get into this video. We're going to talk about DJ Mayhew in this video and where I think DJ Mayhew will sign. And it kind of seems like the Battle of New York, but maybe it's not totally the Battle of New York baseball teams. So yeah, I'm going to predict where he signs some teams that are not named the New York Mets and New York Yankees that I think could make a push to get DJ Mayhew. And if you want to see a video about JT Romuto or Trevor Bauer soon, maybe tomorrow, then yeah, leave a like on this video, subscribe, turn on notifications. Yeah, let's go ahead and get into this video talking about DJ Mayhew. Now there have been multiple reports that have came out that it's going to be the battle of New York baseball teams, being the Mets and the Yankees, obviously. Now, the Mets, I predicted, go watch the George Springer video from yesterday, but I'll kind of spoil it a little bit for you, that I predicted George Springer to go to the New York Mets, right? And first in my predictions, I predicted him to go to the Cincinnati Reds. Now, for DJ Mayhew, I think I predicted him to go back to the Yankees, if I'm not mistaken. I predicted him to go back to the Yankees, right? And I just am not seeing that right now. I just don't see why he... I don't think he's going back to the Yankees right now. Because the Yankees seem like they really don't have the motivation to pay DJ Mayhew a bunch of money. And DJ Mayhew's kind of already said the contract that he wants, which is five years, $125 million. So you could say maybe he's going to be one of the first free agents to be signed this year. And maybe you're right. I don't know. But I said George Springer would be the first one signed. I think DJ Mayhew will be the second of the big free agents this offseason signed. And I really think that DJ Mayhew's not going back to the Yankees. It's just so much that just really... Um, Cashman said Glaber Torres is a better second baseman. So you're looking at what are some other options for the New York Yankees. We're going to top, talk about that in this video as well. What are some other options for the Yankees if DJ Mayhew doesn't come back? Because I'm going to go ahead and say I don't think he's coming back to the Yankees. And I'm going to give some other options that I think could be some good options. Obviously, you're probably not going to replace the services of DJ Mayhew. But you're going to try to replace it differently, if that makes any sense. Now, here's the first thing with the Yankees. They have good relief pitching. And if DJ Mayhew does leave, they're in need of a second baseman or a shortstop. Now, if he does leave, I think Glaber Torres is being moved to second base. Now, they still need starting pitching. And there's some good starting pitching on the market. But it doesn't seem like a Trevor Bauer is likely for this team. So we're going to get, we're going to try to get him a shortstop for a reasonable cost that could be good for them. And we're going to try to get some good starting pitching because the starting pitching was why they got eliminated in the ALDS by the Tampa Bay Rays. So let's go ahead and do that. Also, another thing that I think Yankees fans and just fans in general of baseball are saying that they need a catcher and Gary Sanchez is not the right catcher. And I agree with that. I'm not a big fan of Gary Sanchez at all. I, doesn't, I don't like the, the way that he just does not play any defense at all. And he's not that great of a hitter. I think people overreact to his hitting. And I'm not a big fan of Gary Sanchez. I think they should get a catcher. Now, should they pay a JT Romuto? Absolutely not, I don't think. But I think they should try to get a serviceable catcher. And I think the serviceable catcher is... They've got a couple different options here. Now, one option that I would go with here is the cheap option of, I, th I, think I, I think I'm going to go with Jason Castro here because Jason Castro is a left-handed bat. They're very right-handed heavy in their lineup. Jason Castro, I think, would be perfect. Now, is Jason Castro a big bat for them? No. Maybe Matt Wieters is another option. I think they should target kind of a left-handed bat here. Maybe Yadier Molina is a possibility, too. But I really think this team should get Jason Castro, who's 34 years old. He's a little older, um, but he's, he's, he's good. I think they could use a left-handed bat, and I think Jason Castro would be perfect for the Yankees in this scenario. Now for shortstops. We're going to look at some of the shortstops, and we're going to say unaffordable or not affordable. Or affordable, but maybe they just don't really want them. First is Ehir Andresa. He's... 
definitely an option they could use. Um, Freddie Galvis is an option as well. Didi Gregorius, I think, might go on like a one-year 15 million. Maybe he goes on that type of deal, maybe a two-year 30. But I think Didi Gregorius is kind of the obvious option here at shortstop, in my opinion. I feel like he's the obvious option because I just do. I feel like he's the obvious option here. And I would pay LeMahieu a two-year, $30 million contract to return to the Yankees. Hassan Kim, I don't really... They could pay him, but I just... Uh, um, Joe Panic, I don't really... They could use Joe Panic. I think it's going to be between Joe Panic, Didi Gregorius, or an Anderson Simmons here. I really do think that's what it's going to be between. Now let's go ahead and build the Yankees starting pitching to where they're actually a decent starting pitching team because I said it since the start of the season. I don't think this team's going to make it to the World Series because of their bad starting pitching. And I was right. I was totally right that they would not make it to the World Series because of their terrible pitching. One of my best predictions from the 2020 season predictions. Now let's go ahead and look at some realistic options, whether it's in the trades or or for from the free agent market. So, I've, I'm, I'm going to go the way of, for a couple, maybe you're taking a risk. But what I think they should do first is trade for you, Darvish, from the Chicago Cup. They have the prospects to give up, whether it's giving up Clinton Frazier or Miguel and Duhar or whoever. Miguel and Duhar really doesn't have a spot because unless they trade Chris Bryant. But what they should do is try to get you, Darvish, or Sonny Gray. Now, I think Hugh Darvish is more likely. Sonny Gray is hated by Yankees fans because of his terrible performance after he was traded from Oakland. Now, Bauer's the best starting pitcher on the market, but he's not going there. It doesn't seem like. The move I think they should do right here is I think they should sign Corey Kluber to a one-year, $12 million deal. Here's the mindset behind this move, if I'm Brian Cashman. Is we need starting pitching. And we see the potential in Corey Kluber. The potential that's always been there when he was the Cy Young. And we're going to take a risk here. And I think it's a great risk to take. Now, after that, I think they should sign Chris Archer for a one-year, $10 million deal. Now, I know you're probably saying, well, what if these pitchers are all very good and they can't re-sign well, that's okay, because here with Chris Archer, you could take a risk. Now, he is he, he, he was the main part in one of the worst trades in the MLB history, Austin Meadows and Tyler Glasnow for Chris Archer. But that's okay. I still think Chris Archer has a ton of potential that he has not showed yet in Major League Baseball. Now we're going to get... So now if they can't make a move for you, Darvish, they have a rotation of Garrett Cole, you, Darvish, Corey Kluber, and Chris Archer. Now they still could use maybe another starter you could say, but their starting pitching is looking a lot better. Let's go ahead and look at their rotation. Okay, so you now can move Luis Severino to the bullpen, which I think is where he's going to be best for this team. Debbie Garcia didn't show a lot of potential in 2020. So I'm just pretty much, this whole rotation is gone. Now we are going to re-sign Tanaka for like a two-year $20 million deal or something like that. But this is my plan if I'm the GM of the Yankees. That's what I would do. I would revamp this rotation because this rotation is absolute trash as of right now, in my opinion. Now, let's go ahead and get to the New York Mets. Now, I don't think the New York Mets are signing J.J. LeMahieu, which you're probably saying, okay, interesting. I don't think he's signing with either of the New York teams. I think there's a team that's going to sneak in and get LeMahieu. And it's a team that's been rumored to get everybody. I'm not spoiling it yet. Let's go ahead and look at the Mets, talk about the Mets, and yeah. With the Mets, I had them getting George Springer yesterday. Okay, so they're not going to get Springer and LeMahieu. Now, Cano, obviously, he got suspended for the 2021 season. So, the Mets, they definitely could use a second baseman. But I don't think it's realistic. I think Andres Jimenez has a lot of potential at that position. I think with Springer, that makes them a lot better of a team. But I think that they should try to get another starter instead because I think they could use another starter. I'm not a big fan of Steven Matz. 
I've, I think I've said that in multiple videos before. I'm not big on Stephen Matz. And here's why I'm not. He's just too inconsistent for my liking. So Stephen Matz can be traded somewhere else. If we can get a decent prospect back for him, great. David Peterson, he showed a lot of potential. Seth Lugo, we're moving to the bullpen. Now you have a top four of Jacob DeGrom, Nova Syndergaard, Marcus Stroman, and David Peterson. Now you still could use another back-end starter here. And I'm going to give some options for that. You've got your new catcher in James McCann. And I think a James McCann, George Springer, you've got that for your offseason. I think Mets fans would consider that as a success. The two things that you needed probably the most. Now, you, you definitely could use some relief pitching here. And I would try to get some relief pitching if I'm the New York Mets. Because there's some relief pitching that's good and there's some that's just garbage. And let's go ahead and go over their relief pitching and what I think they could, how they could improve their bullpen. They've already made a move this offseason in the bullpen getting Trevor May. I made a video, I said, like, I'll, I like that signing a lot, pretty much. And I do. Miguel Castro is a player that I really do see the potential in, and I think he's going to be a very good relief pitcher. Dylan Batances, I'm not that, not that big of a fan of. Jury's Familia, he's inconsistent. Edwin Diaz, kind of inconsistent once again. So, I really just think that they could use a lot of seventh inning role type of closers. I really seventh inning type of role players. First move, if I was them, I would go and get Kirby Yates. Now, Kirby Yates is a player that's been very good, but was not good in 2020. Which, almost is good for the Mets, because if they can make him into a good pitcher, then his value skyrockets, and he's on a dirt-cheap contract. Because I don't think he's going to cost too much, honestly. So, and you make some other moves there. So, here are the moves I suggest for the New York Mets. And let's go ahead and look at some other places maybe they could use some help. I think they could use some help at third base. J.D. Davis, I'm not a fan of that much. I think Andres Jimenez, maybe if you move him to third base, that's better. But I'm not a big fan of J.D. Davis. I don't like the fact that he just does not play any defense at all. And that's kind of my problem. But the rest looks very, very good right now for the New York Mets. So let's go ahead and get, get him some relief pitchers for us decent contracts and another starting pitcher and that's kind of going to be the Mets part portion of this video so yeah let's do that now the starter I'm going to get maybe a little disappointing to Mets fans because maybe they can make some other better moves but I'm going to get Garrett Richards Garrett Richards I think has a ton of potential that he just really can't hasn't lived up to because of injuries Garrett Richards still has some potential, and I think he could be good for this team. And if you can't get Garrett Richards, your second option or first option should be Jake Ordorizzi. Jake Ordorizzi is a good back-end pitcher who at his best could be a good number two or number three for a team. And I really would like this move. I think they should do either of those and get starting pitching because they need starting pitching. Now, I predicted Alex Kalmay to go to the Mets in my predictions video, right? Alex Kalame is a player that I do see maybe go into the Mets. But after this Trevor May signing, I think it just kind of makes it more and more unlikely. But one move that I would like them to do to get a right-handed pitcher in the bullpen is get Archie Bradley. Archie Bradley was not hindered by the Cincinnati Reds, and I think Archie Bradley would be very good for this team. We're going to kind of take a risk on the next player, and that's going to be Wade Davis, who's 35 years old, I know. But I still think he can be very, very good for and effective for an MLB team. Now, the big move that I think they should make is get Ken Giles. Ken Giles will be a very good relief pitcher for them, and they're looking at a really, really good bullpen here for the New York Mets. So, yeah, that's my Mets portion of this video, and let's go ahead and get into maybe some teams that could sneak in at the last minute and possibly get DJ LeMahieu. First team, now... None of Major League Baseball wants to see this, but it's the L.A. Dodgers. The Dodgers could make a move. Gavin Lux, he, he could be a centerpiece in a trade. But I think they could make a, they could possibly get DJ LeMahieu. Now, I could be wrong. I think they could be one of, I think they're in my sneaky teams tier for DJ LeMahieu, if I'm being honest. I think they're in my sneaky teams that could possibly get him, if I'm being honest. 
Will they get him? That's questionable. I think maybe they see the potential in Gavin Lux, or maybe they move Gavin Lux. I really don't know. Now, the next one is the Boston Red Sox. And I said this in my last video pretty much saying that I think that they should get DJ Mayhew more than George Springer. But DJ Mayhew is not that you should try to get Trevor Bauer more. Now, I do believe that. But Dustin Pastoria, he's really not doing it. He's injured too much. Michael Chave is not doing it. Christian Arroyo. They could use a second baseman, and I would pay DJ Mayhew. I don't think Trevor Bauer is going to Boston. Maybe you could sneak in and get a DJ Mayhew. They're one of the teams that's kind of my sneaky team to get DJ Mayhew services. So, yeah, that's my two sneaky teams. And let's go ahead and get into the team that I think will sign DJ Mayhew this offseason. And it is going to be the, drumroll please, Toronto Blue Jays. I mentioned in my last video pretty much saying that I think they have a set outfit right now. And I think that they should try to get DJ LeMahieu. And I believe that. They have Vlad Guerrero. They have Kevin Biggio. Which Kevin Biggio in this scenario is going to be moved over to third base. And Bo Bichette to shortstop. Now DJ LeMahieu is going to be at second base. And this team looks really, really good. Now you could say that they still do have some holes in this team. And I, and I agree with that. I think they still could use the bullpen arms. They still need to re-sign Ken Jock or get another relief pitcher. And I think that the Blue Jays are going to make big moves. And I think if they do not get DJ Mayhew, which I think they are, they're going to get Hassan Kim from the KBO. I think that DJ Mayhew is going to be the big signing for the Blue Jays. They've been rumored, interested in everybody. And the move for them is going to be the Blue for them is going to be to get DJ Mayhew, and he's a top five free agent, definitely in this free agency. Let's go ahead and see what the Blue Jays, after a potential DJ Mayhew signing, would would look like, and maybe some holes still. Now I do want to say that just because I have DJ Mayhew going to the Blue Jays does not necessarily mean that I think that the Blue Jays are absolutely World Series contenders now. I still think they do have some some problems. And Hinchin Ryu, he is a great number one. Nate Pearson looks like he has a ton of potential. Robbie Ray, a good number three, number four, number five. But I think they should still they still need one or two more rotation arms in this rotation. I don't think they're totally done. And I think they still could use some arms in this rotation. That's my personal opinion. I think they could use some arms in this opinion, in my opinion in the rotation. Their bullpen could use some work. Now, Rafael Delis was kind of their closer. I wasn't a big fan of him as a closer. I think they still could use a closer. I think they should get a Liam Hendricks, Kirby Yates, or Kid Giles. I think they should try to get one of those. They still need some help in the bullpen. And, yeah. Let's go ahead and talk a little more about the Blue Jays, and that's kind of going to be the end of this video. The Blue Jays could use a catcher. Now, who is that catcher going to be? That's the question. Let's go ahead and look at some potential catcher options. Now, their infield set, their outfield set, and their DH is kind of set too. So the Blue Jays are a set team, but they still can use some catcher, relief pitching, and starting pitching. So they're far from being a World Series contender. And with the signing of DJ Mayhew and potential other players, let's just say they just signed DJ Mayhew this offseason. That was the only thing they did this offseason was sign DJ Mayhew. What would my projection for them be next season? My projection for them would be the Red Sox don't get any two of the top free agents. Like I said, I don't see them getting Trevor Bauer either, or, nor JT Romita. Maybe the Red Sox do surprise me, but here's what I project them to be. I project the Orioles to be in fifth place. I project the Red Sox to be in fourth place if they do not make some moves. I project the Blue Jays to come in in third place once again. I don't think the DJ Mayhew signing is making them World Series contenders, but I think it makes them a lot better, obviously. I just think there's a lot more holes, and they are in a tough AL East. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that probably a couple times, but they're in a very tough AL East. And with the Rays and Yankees in that division, I can't see them being better than the Rays or Yankees next season. I really can't, and DJ Mayhew's not going to a loser of a team. That's probably what you're thinking. He's not going to a loser of a team. He's going to a very good team, just in a very tough division. 
and I think if they were in the AL Central, they would win the AL Central. I think if they were in the AL West next year, I think they will win the AL West. I think if they were in any other division but the AL East, they would win it. But they're not, and I really think that the Blue Jays are a very good team, and maybe they can make the playoffs, even as a third-place team. It doesn't look like the expanded playoffs is going to happen for the 2021 MLB season. So, it's it, I, I'm, I just don't think they're going to be better than the Rays or the Yankees. Now, if they can make even more moves, then maybe they can. But I still think the Rays are better and the Yankees are better. So, yeah, I still think the Blue Jays do have moves to do. I, I'm not a big fan of Danny Jansen behind the plate. I know he does, is pretty good behind the plate, but I think he is absolutely terrible with that. Um, and, yeah, Alejandro Kirk, I'm pretty sure he was like their number five prospect. He's going to come up. Maybe he can be good. They still need some relief pitching. I'm going to give some options for relief pitching and starting pitching here in just a second. Well, as I'm filming this video, Matt Andres signed with the Red Sox, so cool there. Um, gets a good move. I really don't even care that much, honestly. Um, now, what should they do? I think that they should bring in Matt Harvey. You're probably wondering... Out of all people, Matt Harvey, is that the best we've got to bring in? Matt Harvey's just a play that we're going to take a risk on here. And he's going to be a relief pitcher, and I really don't know how good he's going to do. We're going to re-sign Ken Giles here. But what we're also going to do is we're going to make a splash in free agency, and we're going to sign Shane Green. And if you sign Ken Giles and Shane Green, your projection, in my opinion, is still in third place. But it may make it to where you, the Yankees are a third place team, which I know Yankees fans, you're probably just frustrated. But I think it could make it to be where the Yankees are a third place team if they do make some moves. Let's go ahead and give some options for starting pitching and that's really gonna be the end of this video. Some options for starting pitching that do not include Trevor Bauer. Okay, so uh, I'm going to they need a veteran on this team, and Jake Arrieta is going to be the perfect veteran on this team. Jake Arrieta, they're going to sign here. Next is another play that we're going to take a risk on, Mike fulton -Evich. Mike fulton has shown potential, and he's been terrible at some times, honestly. I'm just going to be honest. So that those are two players, and let's go ahead and, yeah, we're going to look for a catcher here, and that's going to be the end of this video after we... Look for a catcher that's realistic, I think. Now, I said this for the Yankees, but their lineup is right-handed heavy as well. In this scenario, I think they should go for a left-handed bat. That left-handed bat, you could say, is Jason Castro. But in this scenario, I've already got somebody getting Jason Castro. In this scenario, I think that the Blue Jays are going to get... Drum roll, please. I think they're going to sign a. I mean, Robin Citrinos, I really think, is probably the option here that they're going to go with. Tyler Flowers, maybe. Kirk Casale, Jason Castro. I don't really know. I think if it comes down to it, I think they're getting Robin Citrinos for like a one year cheap contract. So yeah, that's going to be the end of this video. If you made it to the end, you had to enjoy something. Leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications. Thank you for watching, and peace.